Hey, I'm Alex Rackliff from Board Game Co. And as many of you know, also Chief Marketing Officer of GameFound. This is going to be another GameFound update video. If that's not what you're here for, totally respect that. You can skip this video. There'll be another one later today. But past that, this is an update around a bunch of things related to GameFound, various features, various uh, both for, for backers, for creators. I'll have everything timestamped down below so you can jump to whatever section relevant to, or just, you know, stay tuned for the whole thing if you want to peek behind the curtains, how the sausage is made, all that kind of things. But let's go ahead and dive into this. Uh, this is going to be, first of all, before we dive into the, the features, because we got a bunch of features, bunch of things. But starting off, there are a bunch of fun campaigns you can check out over on GameFound right now, uh, starting with, you know, obviously Elder Scrolls doing tremendously well, Elder Scrolls of Trail of Second Era from Chip Theory Games, we have Explore to doing tremendously well, Talos Lanta, a giant RPG from Everything Epic Games, we have The Hunt, Tirnanog, Gatefall Monsters, a Final Strike, a fun little indie game of crafting weapons, lots of fun things going on over there, I've had a chance to play that one, really enjoy that one with some caveats, but a fun little system. We have a DEI, Divide et Impera, a personal favorite from Ludus Magnus Studios, amongst many, many other campaigns. If I, if I didn't list the current one i'm sorry there's too many to go through in this little brief update but past that let's go ahead and dive into some of the new features that we've been and by new features i mean that every few months i do an update on this channel over here on board game co talking about some of the features some of the things you've seen because game found is always iterating and changing it's one of those things that if you pop into it one day and you pop into it six months later the whole ecosystem has changed as we continue to be bring you the best possible features to react to both creator feedback to backer feedback as well as our own ideas of whatever we can think of like a stretch pay for example something we've talked about in the past the idea of separating out your pledge over multiple payments it's doing tremendously well over on the platform a lot of backers are using it for a variety of campaigns it's been a huge hit with backers and creators alike we're very happy with that and that's something that we you know thought of in-house it wasn't a feature that was brought to us or requested or whatnot it's just a feature that makes sense for crowdfunding but with that let's go ahead and dive into things starting off with option management now some of these names might not mean a lot but option management is the idea to you that that effectively you have the option within a product to select an option of that product. The most basic example that's relevant to you in your day-to-day -day life is when you head onto a website and you want to purchase a shirt and you can choose the size and color and all that. Innovative, not tremendously, but also not something we've seen in crowdfunding before and we do have it over on GameFound. That could be relevant to choosing a specific color of Meeple. I know, for example, a good example would be... Uh, that phone should be off. I'm going to mute that phone. Let's go ahead and mute the phone before things get worse. But for example, a good relevant basis would be the idea that uh, if you were backing, uh, what's the game? If you're backing, um, uh, what's it called? Oh my gosh, Keyforge. Keyforge had the example where you often have to choose different things, different play mats, different selections. And so you can choose within there, hey, I want the play map, but I want the option of this type. Instead of having to create separate forms and work with people, this is the kind of thing that's useful to both backers and creators, giving you the tools to mess with language additions, uh, various options, sun dropped or not sun dropped, different things within a product. So you're selecting a product and then the configuration of said product rather than having to deal with different items entirely or separate questionnaires to resolve things. There's also new badges. This is something we introduced a while ago, the general idea of having you know, top backers or various things like that. But now we have backer and prior backer. Those are little badges that are relevant to commenters on a project. So if you're browsing through the comments and you see someone saying backer, that means they are not just commenting on said project, asking for information, uh, chipping in their two cents about this campaign, a prior campaign, whatever, but rather you can see whether they are someone who is actively backing the project, just giving you at a glance the idea of who and from what sense of frame they're commenting on the, the project. We also have prior backer, which tells you that they have backed a project from that creator in the past. So they are not just familiar with the platform, but they're in fact familiar with this particular creator. They've backed their projects. Again, it's not like some giant badge of approval, but it gives you context who you're talking to or what frame of reference anyone has as they are commenting on a project. You also have the option to be able to go through your payment history. One of the things about crowdfunding is there's lots of ways of getting, well, paying for things slowly but surely. You have the, the actual pledge, but then, you know, did you pay for the pledge? Did you pay for shipping? Did you make an addition? You have all these various things you can do, so it's not as simple as just having an order, but there's a history to that order, and now you can start going through that payment history as well. Again, just giving you more tools to manage what you see or how you see the information presented. Speaking of managing information, we also have archiving projects. Now you can go ahead to the back end of GameFound as you go through things and archive certain projects so they don't show up in your feed. Whether it's that dollar pledge you don't particularly care about or whether it's a project you received I don't know six years ago and you just don't want to see it as you scroll through things you can go ahead and archive projects so they don't show up and yes you can use filters to make sure you can see those as you want but in general you can remove them from the default view as you go through it now one thing I may have talked about in the past already I'm not entirely certain is game found currency conversion 
This is basically, I mean, as you imagine, it converts currency. As you, if you're trying to buy something in different currency, it gives you the option option to go ahead and on the platform itself use the currency conversion, which will ideally save you a few cents per per. Well, not a few cents, but ideally save you a few small percentage points, giving you the best possible conversion rate as you buy things in different currencies, rather than using whatever credit card system, or whatever fees you have in place outside of there. So ideally, it's something that will benefit you. Uh, obviously, check your rates as you go through it if you care. But strictly speaking, for most people, it should save you money when you are buying something in a different currency. Ideally, I just say ideally, just double check your rates, but it should ideally save you money there. Additionally, we have new tiles on the project pages. If you're scrolling through GameFound and you see all those featured projects, there's a little button in the little corner, well, depending on what interface you're on, but either a little button or you can tap on it. Basically, you can flip cards. So you can see more information about the project without even having to go into the project. So not only are we saving you cents, we're saving you clicks at the same time. So you don't have to pop into a project to see everything. You can go ahead and check out a brief level of overview information as you flip these tiles to see more information information. And then another little fun thing, and this is, I don't know if it's more of a creator tool or a backer tool, let's just call it an information tool, an informational tool, but this is the idea that you can see the full funding of a project rather than what is just present on crowdfunding. Now, this is something that I've always enjoyed seeing on certain backer systems in the past. When you go onto it, you can see, hey, I know this project raised two and a half million on crowdfunding, but I can also see that it raised an additional $400,000 in the pledge manager. It's always fun to see how a project is actually done over the course of the lifetime. Again, I don't know how useful it is, but it's a fun little metric to be able to see. And now we've given creators the option to turn that on. So it is created by creator. The platform allows it, whether a creator does it or not is up to them. But that does mean, for example, you can head on over to the Castle of Burgundy project page and you'll see, hey, look at us. As we ra it's raised $5 million in the entire crowdfunding journey, crowdfunding through Pledge Manager through to where we are today. So you can see that number constantly adjusting and climbing. This could be useful if you're a creator to be able to run, hey, by the way, not not only are we going to do stretch goals now, but we'll even keep some of the stretch goals going in the late pledge, something I've seen creators do in the past. Uh, Steamforge, I know, for example, has done that on some of their projects, but you'd be able to see and watch that progression. So you can kind of get more of a sense of the full scope of the project as opposed to where the project was at a slice in history. Again, this is created by creator, but if you do turn it on, so if you do turn on that feature, going to Castle of Burgundy again, you can go ahead and when you pop to the project page, you'll see everything to date. But then if you click, hey, I want to see that specific crowdfunding slice, it'll take you to the crowdfunding project, that window in history where it closed, and you'll see the crowdfunding total. So you'll always be able to see both if the feature is turned on versus if the feature is not turned on, you'll only see the crowdfunding total. So that's just a little, a little more information, a little more clarity. And lastly, speaking of information and clarity, one thing you may have noticed as a backer, or even as a creator for that matter, if you're wandering around checking out pledge levels, you'll see that when you have a pledge level, it's like, hey, this is a $300 pledge, but really it's like, you know, rated down to 240. If you see a sale price effectively, there's gonna be a little tag saying, hey, this is the lowest price you've seen in the past 30 days. If you're confused by what, what's up with that, that's basically a legal aspect of the Omnibus Directive where complying with laws that, that try to basically protect uh, consumers from being sold things at sale prices that aren't really so sale prices. That idea when you pop onto a product on a site and it's like, hey, it's down to $29.99. And really, it's been down to $29.99 for the past four years. In fact, last week, it was down to $23.99 instead. So try to prevent that. There's legal, uh, legal, legal laws. There's laws around the idea of showing what the lowest price was. So that's something you'll see. It's usually not going to be really relevant, but it does give you that full transparency on the off chance there was some other price. Well, now you know. Now you have the full information. Again, you can mostly ignore that if you see that. And that's basically what we have from the from the uh, backer side of things. Now, from the creator side of things, and again, feel free to keep watching at this point. If you're just here for the backer stuff, we've covered most of them. If you're here, oh, well, you know, before we do that, we'll also talk about following. Uh, we are going to have following uh, coming up very shortly on the on the, on the the platform. That's an often requested feature, the idea of being able to follow other people on the platform so I can go ahead and follow you. And then when you back something, I get notified that you back something. You are going to have that option on the platform now with a degree of privacy built in. So in other words, as a person on the platform, you can go to your account and you can make your account public or private. If it's public, others will be able to follow you and you'll be able to follow others. If it's private, no one can follow you, but you can't follow others either. So you'll have that option to turn that on if you do or don't want people to see your backing history, which depending on how many you're backing could either be inspiring or possibly embarrassing, depending on who you are or what's going on there. But effectively, that follow feature will be in place. So it's, it's coming very shortly. It should be launching soon. But basically, you'll be able to follow others, see what they backed, be along for the journey. Now you can go ahead and see when your friend Ben is backing those three projects, either because you're just curious what Ben backs, or maybe it teaches you about projects you weren't even aware of, and you know Ben 
Ben's always up to date on the various projects they're backing, and so that should help you there. Which brings us to the creator focus features. Again, a variety over here. And if you're a backer, some of these things are just interesting to understand what goes on behind the curtain in crowdfunding. I always personally like knowing, well, the ecosystem that I'm in as a, as a backer, as a content creator. I like knowing the ecosystem that's there. These may be interesting to you, or you're actually a creator, and this is relevant for you there. Uh, to that end, we have the Creator Digest and Notifications. It's gonna be the idea that we have more notifications in place for creators, including a Creator Digest. These are some features, by the way, that have been rolled out slowly but surely over the past, you know, uh, several weeks or months, just consolidating a bunch of the highlights into this video. But the Creators Digest is giving the creator a kind of once a day summary doing their project of the high notes of, you know, what's been raised, uh, what, how many comments they need to respond with or engage with, what are the most popular comments on their page that have gotten like, you know, seven replies to it and 15 likes. Kind of giving you a, a all-in-one glimpse of both the financial and the community aspect of what's going on in your project in a single Creators Digest. This is something we'll be constantly updating over time to give you, the creator, the, the best insights that you need. We're going to take into account feedback of what works for you, what doesn't work for you, what pieces you're ignoring, and what pieces you're paying attention to, to give you the best possible kind of single digest of everything going on in your project. Additionally, we have the ability to copy descriptions. Now again, this goes to the behind the scene aspect if you're not a creator where as you go through GameFound, there are different phases. There's the pre-launch, there's the launch, there's the, the late pledge, there's all these different phases to a project. And we kind of allow you to edit different phases at different points. So you have different pages set up. You have your pre-launch page, but then you have your project page so that when you go live, it just changes at a glance. You're not kind of rewriting information. You're going to a different phase where different information is stored. And now we have the ability to copy information from phase to phase because very often there's a degree of overlap in that information. So we're just making the tools easier for you as a creator to be able to, instead of having to recreate, you can kind of of copy and then make edits as necessary. It's just a little easier for you to uh, quality of life kind of updates. Additionally, we have statistics around updates. This is a big one and a very interesting one. Again, I think from a even from a backer side, I think this is very fascinating. But we've, impl we've, impl we've implemented statistics around updates on the platform. So for example, when you as a creator send out an update, you'll have notifications of, you know, what changed around the project, uh, you know, what likes, what comments, what's engagement, you know, people following the project, unfollowing the project, whether you have people, whether you have ad what additional funding was added through the project, how many pledges were added, you kind of get an overview of the impact that update had. Now, sometimes it's because you said, hey, this is an update, we have a new optional buy, and then people will go to the update, they'll see that, they'll see that additional pack, and then a bunch of people will go ahead and add it. And so you'll kind of be able to track, hey, you know what, we actually went up in, you know, $70,000 in funding, but we lost 15 backers. So you kind of have a sense of the impact that your updates have on your community. You have a sense of, you know, how your, your correspondence, your communication, your communication, whether they involve optional buy, whether they don't, whether it's about the opening of the late pledge, you have all this kind of information around the updates you're engaging with your community and how they're affecting things, which I think is useful both from the general financial sense, but also to kind of know how things are playing out. Did you post an update that may have ticked off the wrong crowd of people? You'll have a sense of something having gone wrong and you'll be able to adjust, you know, how you communicate with your community as a result. So I think it's very useful information to have those kind of statistics around what happens when a user clicks on an update and then what they do on the platform from clicking on that update. You're also going to have a few payment information tools in terms of like fund collection preview and payout history. This is kind of giving you a general sense of, you know, the funds that are being collected as they go, as well as your payout history on the platform, just more informational tools uh, to you to be able to see all that information at a glance. One thing that's particularly useful, although very dry and boring if you're not a creator, is exports from the platform. We have a lot of exports set up for a variety of fulfillment centers. We have Asmodee, Quartermaster Logistics, we have Fulfill Right, Let's Play Games, uh, Ship Quest, Ship Station, Spiral Galaxy, uh, VFI, VR Distribution, and Zatu Games, and we're going to be adding them as we need to, basically ensuring that you have the exports you need to be able to communicate with your fulfillment centers whatever information they need to be able to do what they need next. Again, this just makes everything a lot easier. This is a big quality of life update as opposed to you having to fiddle around with tables and information and all that. We just have them set up as standard exports for that particular fulfillment center. It's something we've been working on heavily over the past few months to just make your life easier as a creator and just, well, make your life easier as a creator. Additionally, one thing that's a small pet peeve, uh, not a small pet peeve, a big pet peeve of many creators is the fact that very often on the platform you have to edit content in these small little windows. You, you're you trying to make these large updates in these, all this, the information with pictures and images and all that and you're doing all that in these windows that were too small and now you can make those windows larger 
I know that's super cool, but really it is. Again, if you're a creator, that really makes your life a lot easier. We've known it's a problem for a while, and we finally fixed it and made sure that you can actually uh, edit and see all the things you're editing, as opposed to having to try to fiddle with either two small windows or moving information from somewhere else to it to make it all work. Again, small things, but hopefully uh, quality of life. You can also edit backers' orders. That means that a backer who's trying to make adjustments to you, you don't just have to, you don't no longer have to walk them through what they need to do, but you could do that, or you can just make the changes on your end, and everything will process as well and then lastly and again this is more creative news the paid the pledge manager that game founders had which has been free for a very very long time is going to be paid i'll link to the blog post down below there's a recent blog post that kind of goes over a lot of information i'm just going to hit the high notes here but effectively game found since it's obsession since its inception has had a free pledge manager system that's to basically make your life easier to give you those tools and just it's been a, a resource that has basically helped grow the platform and given people an option that is well incredible and just free which is mostly a good thing the downside is that as a free platform, it's something that we've invested more time and effort and energy into the continued development of GameFound as a crowdfunding platform because that's where we are actually getting a return on the development time that's being put there versus the PM is something that's kind of has sat there and has not been given the same love and attention. We are now giving it the same love and attention in a variety of ways to constantly make sure it's improved and there. But again, this costs development time and, and energy, which means we do have to eventually finally, after like seven or eight years, finally make it a paid pledge manager. So it is going to be a paid pledge manager it's gonna be the same basic rates as game found uh, this is something that hopefully if you're someone who's already using the platform you've gotten an update from your key account manager and again if not i'll have a full blog post down below but basically it's a two-sided one on the one hand we're going to be paying we're going to be charging for the pledge manager so if you've been using it as a free one that unfortunately is going away soon the upside of it is we're going to make it a much more fully functioning tool and clean up a ton of things about it any small pet peeves you had this that the other we're really trying to give it the full effort love and attention that we've been giving the rest of the game found ecosystem and that is your game found update i hope you've enjoyed this in some way let me know if you care about this stuff i'm curious because this is like general informational stuff about the platform about the way it's growing i try to keep these updates on board game co infrequent because i you, you signed up for a reason and i try to keep it focused as much as possible but once in a while i do want to let you know all the changes on the platform all the things happening GameFound is constantly growing. It's constantly doing what it can to be the best platform. We're never staying in one place. And we always want to ensure that for backers, for creators, for everyone in the ecosystem, that it's the best possible experience you can have. And if you have ideas, if you have things you want to see, comment down below because these comments are read and uh, your feedback is taken into account. And yes, I also know you want an app. In any case, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from BoardGameCo and CMO of GameFound. And I hope you have a good one.